is Michelle Taylor from veganbreak.com and I'm here today with Lauren Ornelas, the founder and director of Food Empowerment Project, a food justice organization. And yeah, Lauren, can you tell us a little bit about what your organization does? Sure, we're a vegan food justice organization, so we do our work to promote veganism. We work on access to healthy issues in communities of color and low income communities. We also advocate on farm worker rights and do a little bit of about um, slavery in the chocolate industry and different things, the campaigns that we run to try and stop that. Awesome, so what are your current big campaigns that people can look out for? One of our big campaigns right now is um, regarding Cliff Bar. And so just a little bit of background about the chocolate industry. When we talk about slavery, what it is that we mean. And most of it takes place in West Africa, particularly in the Ivory Coast and in Ghana, where you have children who are either kidnapped or some who are possibly sold from, by family members or kids and parents who think that they're gonna actually make money um, in the cacao industry. And instead, these children are never paid. They are locked in at night. If they try to escape, they're beaten or they're killed. Um, and these kids as young as seven are carrying heavy equipment like machetes. So a lot of them have scars all over their bodies. And um, they also, if they don't move fast enough when they're, they're carrying these heavy cacao pods, they're beaten. So for me, the first time I heard about this issue was when the BBC covered it. And they interviewed someone who had escaped. And they asked him, what would you say to Westerners who um, eat chocolate? And he said, anytime you eat chocolate, you're biting into my suffering. And I thought, as a vegan activist, yeah. that would be what an animal, a non-human animal, Say. And from then on, I realized I can contribute to this industry. That right. First of all, chocolate is a luxury item. I know people yeah. are addicted to it, <laughs> but it is a luxury item. And um, But you know, we've tried to make it easier for people, but we have on our website a list of chocolate we do and don't recommend. And since we're only a vegan organization, it's only companies that make vegan chocolate products. Right. So you can go to our website and look at the list and see who we recommend and those that we don't recommend. And we encourage people, if one of your favorite chocolate companies is on the do not recommend list because they didn't respond to us, they're not being transparent, we encourage you to write them and let them know this issue is important to you. Right. And Cliff Bar falls into that category mm -hmm. where they are refusing to tell people where they're getting their chocolate from. And so, you know, a company based in the Bay Area who really cares about other social justice issues and environmental issues, they need to be held accountable. They need to be held accountable to their consumers who care about these issues. And we need to, people, we have a petition right now on change.org. Access it from our website or type in change.org cliff bar and sign our petition and spread the word. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, a lot of people will go vegan and then they feel like that they've done all that they can be doing to help others. And by going vegan and the vegan labels that you see on food products are great and that means that it's not involving cruelty to like non-human animals, but it doesn't necessarily take into account the cruelty that's happening to humans. Um, so it's really, really food empowerment project has great resources for us to really be able to see, like you do all the research so we don't have to and we can see what products are truly cruelty free. So it's, it's really amazing. Can you talk about some of the other resources that you have? Sure. One of the other areas, you know, as a vegan organization, we're actually encouraging people to eat more fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's not just vegans who eat fruits and vegetables, it's absolutely everybody who does. And so a lot of people don't understand the plight of farm workers in the fields. And even in California, a state, you know, supposedly known for being very progressive on issues, we're really behind the times. So that is the precedent for the whole U.S. Where you have farm workers who aren't paid minimum wage, some are only paid by the bushel. So it really, their wages are based on how much they get. Um, we have farm workers who are dying in the heat. Um, they aren't provided enough shade. They aren't provided water. We have um, farm workers who are exposed to the agricultural chemicals. So they have all these issues, and yet they're the ones who are providing the food for us to eat. Right. And yet these are the same people who don't even have access to the food in their own communities in order to be healthy. So we really want people to be aware of this. And you know, like you would for any other issue regarding food, you know, contact, you know, there's, we keep people informed about legislation that's going on so they can contact their legislators. Um, we also try and just get the word out about the issue that, you know, if there's letters to the editor about what's happening to keep this information out there because we can all do a little bit more to make sure that farm workers are given the rights that they deserve. Right. Yeah, and another issue that you guys work on that's always been, um, really powerful to me and important to me is just low-income communities and their access to vegan food. 
can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Kind of what we've done is um, we started out by assessi assessing the availability of healthy foods in communities of color and low-income communities compared to higher income areas, all done in Santa Clara County, which is the Silicon Valley, a very wealthy area. And we knew what we would find. We knew that we would find a discrepancy between the higher income and lower income areas. Um, but we wanted to have the data to prove that. But we also did, it's not just surveyed on fresh fruits and vegetables, canned and frozen, also meat and dairy alternatives. And as an ethical, ethical organization, you know, our whole point is because animals do not need to be killed in order for people to have you know, a healthy lifestyle. Um, but it goes deeper than that when you look at these issues where you have communities who have more fast food and liquor stores in their backyards and they don't even have access to the fresh fruits and fresh vegetables that are healthier for them and way more animal products. You have communities who are overwhelmingly lactose intolerant and yet they don't have the dairy alternatives which is better for them. Like instead it's okay for them to get sick because they drink milk instead of having the dairy alternatives there. Yeah. So these are serious issues, you know, ethical issues all around when you look at the impacts in these communities. Right. Yeah, and it's also something that's interesting to, to keep in mind and something that's important to keep in mind as we do vegan outreach, especially if you're involved in, um, in spreading the word about veganism. It's, it's that in some areas it's super accessible and easy for people, but we have to understand that um, in some communities, in some areas, it's really can be a lot more difficult to have the access and the money to get vegan food, which is why it's so important for us to be, you know, putting an effort into building those those resources and um, yeah, lower cost vegan food and all of that um, in order for people to be able to realistically make the food. Absolutely, and we created this leaflet called Yabasta, which in Spanish means enough already. Uh -huh. And so basically shows all these industries, the fast food, the animal consumption, the Coca-Colas, you know, who are really preying in these communities and um, talking about going vegan, but also encouraging them to contact us if they're knowing this is happening and they're noticing it. Because a lot of people, when I talk about the issues, say, you know what, I didn't really realize, but yeah, I have to drive somewhere else to go to a grocery store, but there are liquor stores everywhere in my yeah. neighborhood. You know, and not until somebody really points it out so they really understand this is a form of injustice. This is not the way all communities work. Right. And so we're trying to do our best to make sure that we help make the connection and we actually solve some of the issues that are going on. Great. Well, thank you so much, Lauren, and I definitely encourage everybody to check out the Food Empowerment Project website, um, look at all the research that's been done and all the articles there, and Lauren has been doing an amazing job of just pushing us to do even more and broaden our circle of compassion to everybody and issues that you never would think about a lot of the times until they're brought to public awareness and public attention. So thank you so much Thanks for Lauren. having me. Yeah, is there anything else show. you want to share? We also have a website called veganmexicanfood.com and it's in English and in Spanish and we always are happy for people to donate their recipes to us so we can put more on there. That's so very cool. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you everybody. You can find more videos at veganbreak.com and I will see you next time. Bye.